Welcome to Unit 5. I'm going to start off this unit with a comedy. And I don't want you to take it too seriously. <laughs> but it's called Idiocracy. Like idiot and democracy put together. The main message of idi Idiocracy, in my humble opinion, is how important it is for good people to raise their voices and be involved with politics. It's really poisonous when smart, educated people are scared to even talk about politics. And I'm talking to you directly now. You are viewing this online course because you're trying to be informed about things. I firmly believe that with this kind of knowledge comes a responsibility to discuss and debate the issues with your family, friends, and local community. Okay, end of lecture. Now I'm moving on to a film that more directly addresses the relationship between politicians, the media, and the public. Wag the Dog. Wag the Dog stars Hollywood heavyweights Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman, and follows them as they try to create a fictional world event to distract the public from a breaking political scandal. It's a funny movie, but it presents a very cynical viewpoint of how easy it is to manipulate public opinion. I don't know that I fully agree with that aspect of the film, but it does force us to think hard about the relationship between media and politicians, and why it is in our best interest for them not to be too friendly with each other. Currently in the U.S., reporters are working in an extremely competitive environment, and they're often absolutely desperate for access to inside information. If a reporter discusses information that a politician does not want the public to know about, they may never get another interview. Even worse, an entire publication or TV channel could lose their access to the White House Press Center, for example. This kind of loss of access would be devastating to an organization's ability to report on current events and they would instantly become less competitive with their peers. Now, in the 2016 presidential election, it was a huge surprise to all the experts in the media when Donald Trump won. After election day, all the media outlets could talk about was how they got it wrong. What it came down to was an area of the United States known as the Rust Belt. The Rust Belt is a predominantly white, working-class family area, and they were absolutely devastated by the 2008 financial crisis. All, overall, the economy in the U.S. is improving, but the Rust Belt and many other working-class Americans feel they have been left behind. And these are typically Democratic voters, right? especially associated with labor union. In fact, many feel that they've continued to be victimized by the banks that actually caused the financial crisis, but were bailed out of their troubles by the Obama administration. Although the film Hell or High Water takes place in West Texas rather than the Rust Belt, it really shows the situation that some of these people are living with. Now in the main film, the characters turn to robbing banks as a way to improve their lives, and please don't misinterpret this to mean that Americans are doing the same thing. In fact, right now is one of the safest times ever to live in the United States, if you look at crime statistics. The fact is, the media tends to over-report these shocking, scary stories in general. There's a common expression, if it bleeds, it leads. This expression basically means that if a story has violence and danger, it will be the main story on the evening news. This speaks to the highly competitive nature of the news industry. At the end of the day, a news organization of any kind is a business. And as a business, it needs to make money. Media relies almost exclusively on advertising for a revenue, which means that the more people that watch its programs and reads its articles, the more successful it is. A fictional film that really explores the dark side of this is Nightcrawler, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. It's not based on a true story, but it really makes you think about what kind of things could happen if the wrong people are able to get themselves into this system. So far we've looked at several negative aspects of the media and its relationship with public opinion. Thankfully, the film Spotlight shows a good example of what the media is supposed to do when good people are working hard to produce quality journalism. Bonus, it's a true story. The same is true of the film Good Night and Good Luck, which takes place during a very difficult time in American history and shows a group of extremely brave journalists fighting back against attacks by Senator Joseph McCarthy. An interesting note about Good Night and Good Luck is that one of the film's stars, George Clooney, his father was actually a journalist during the time that this film takes place. And George Clooney has actually made a point of, being, of working in some really smart, politically astute films. In fact, 
We'll be discussing another big George Clooney film in the next unit, or sorry, the unit after next, when we talk about campaigns and the elections. But for now, focus your attention on Idiocracy, Wag the Dog, Truth, Hell or High Water, Nightcrawler, Spotlight, Good Night and Good Luck. See you in the next lesson. Thank <laughs> you.